sorry, this is extremely loud. Uh, rights week. Today I honor the life of Houston police officer Timothy Abernathy. For Officer Abernathy, fighting crime was more than an occupation, it was his personal calling. He bravely dedicated his life to keeping the peace on the streets of Houston, Texas, until he was murdered on December the 7th, 2008, by a cowardly killer. Their murder was cruel and it was cal calculated. After shooting Officer Abernathy once in the neck, the assassin calmly walked up and put the gun close to the back of the officer's head and fired again. Recently, a jury in Houston convicted Mabry Landor III of capital murder of a police officer. This week, the Texas jury sentenced the outlaw to death. Officer Timothy Abernathy served the people of Houston for 11 years. He was married to Stephanie and had children. He, like so many before him, put his life between the people and the lawless. We as a nation need to remember peace officers sometimes become victims of crime while taking care of the rest of us. And that's just the way it is. I yield back. <clears throat> Okay, that, the speaker that you just saw is a congressman for my area, um, Ted Poe. <clears throat> he served as a judge for many years in the city of Houston and saw many cases that were brought to him by the police officers that my dad has trained. Um, and this example of Timothy Abernathy is just one example that my dad has seen, has been with the widow, has gone to the court trials, and has had to testify for it. Um, according to Lori Friedel, uh, professor at University of South Florida, she identified several studies that found uh, the highest number of assaults on police officers are in the United States are among those who are assaulted um, and they're alone at the time of the assault. And the reason I'm here to talk to you today is to persuade you that this unnecessary loss of life and danger that our officers are involved in is because they're patrolling the streets alone. My parents have a combined uh, service time of over 55 years with the Houston Police Department. My father is an expert witness, uh, use of force tactics instructor at the Houston Police Academy. Uh, he served the streets uh, for roughly 15 to 20 years. He was the president of the Texas Police Association for a short time, and my mother worked in the crime lab and was a crime scene photographer for over 25 years. Between them, they've both seen the horrible things that individuals can do um, to officers and how dangerous it is to be out there. What I need from all of you is to hear what I have to say, to have the willingness to stand up and raise your voice to your city council, to your police chief, to save an officer's life. Um, in an interview conducted with Officer Bradman, my father, he told me that the streets are getting more and more dangerous in large cities in particular, and single officers are often being targeted in gang areas. Um, more and more officers are, move, or more and more departments are moving to one-man patrols, which means there's one man in the unit, there's more cars out there, people are feeling safer, but at the risk of the officer's life. They're being forced to wait for a second unit, um, which means when they're in a dangerous area, there's a shooting, they can't do something about it by themselves because they put their life at a greater risk. Um, and, uh, again, he also said, my, my father, Officer Brown, I believe that one officer units are at, more at risk because there's no fear of what will happen to the suspect. Uh, there, if there are two officers, there is a greater chance that an attempt on an officer's life will end in the loss of the suspect. Um, there's no longer a fear that they're going to get killed or something will happen to them if there's a less than lethal um, shooting. But they're targeting these officers because there's only one of them. And it takes two to three minutes to get a second one there. I know that citizens feel safer. Their families can, they want their families to sleep at night. But the officers that serve the city, their families do too. So just because there's two, there's four cars out there, it doesn't mean that there's eight officers. It means that there's usually four, and that can't cover the entire city. Um, I know that here at Heston, we have a small police department, and many of us know them. 
and if we were to lose one, it would be devastating to the city. While in Houston, there's a large number of officers, but it's still just as devastating. Uh, again, for us to be willing to stand up and to do something about it is, is key, because officers like my father have been in many shootings. They've seen the dangers that uh, all the officers face, and you don't have to put your life on the line. Other people are doing that for you. You just need to stand up and be willing to protect theirs. When you stand up, those who protect you know that you're behind them and they'll stand up too. Many unions, <clears throat> police officer unions, are already doing this. Um, I, I know that in the Telegraph, a London um, newspaper, there was an officer quoted as saying that one officer being alone is a waste of life um, and it's extremely dangerous and madness. One, there's the exact quote is one police community officer um, said madness and warned that two heads are better than one. So you need to voice your opinion and stand up against these injustices because it's an unnecessary loss of life. Um, so, um, finally, this is the police memorial in Houston, and my dad has has been there um, at night guarding it. This is Officer Timothy Abernathy, uh, the one we showed earlier. My father was there with his widow and was at the court trial. His name is carved on these rocks, along with the other names of 111. Thank you.